The incident happened in Newport Beach around 8.30 a.m. on August 29, 2008. Martin Kiel was driving on West Cliff Drive when he hit and killed Martha Ovale, who was only 32 years of age, as she walked in a crosswalk. Ovale, a nanny, was on her way to work. She normally took the bus, but this morning she decided to walk. An Orange County Superior Court Commissioner decided today that Kuehl, who is accused of texting while driving and fatally hitting Ovale, must stand trial for gross vehicle manslaughter. Martin Kuehl, 41, of Costa Mesa, faces up to nine years in prison if convicted of the felony. The court has determined that there was enough evidence that the crash was caused by more than ordinary carelessness and denied a motion brought by the public defender to reduce the charge to a misdemeanor. The court noted that while Kuehl did not send or receive texts at the time of the crash, Kuehl had his cell phone in his hand at the time of the incident and had been texting back and forth with a friend for several minutes before the crash. As we have seen, there is a major problem with texting while driving. You can get you sent to prison, or in a worst case scenario, you could end up killing somebody. So we also want to go over the causes. What is actually happening? What are the, what's physically happening while you're texting and driving at the same time? And third, I'd like to go over some solutions that can help us get over this problem. Given recent catastrophic crash events and disturbing trends, there is an alarming amount of misinformation and confusion regarding cell phone, text, cell phone and texting while behind the wheel of a vehicle, says Dr. Tom Dingus, director of Virginia Tech Transportation Institute. VTTI studies state that manual manipulation of phones, such as dialing and texting of the cell phone, lead to a substantial increase of being involved in a safety critical event such as a crash or a near crash. However, talking or listening to talking or listening increased much less than text messaging. Eye glance analysis was conducted to assess where drivers were looking when involved in safety critical events and performing cell phone tasks. The tasks that draw the driver's eyes away from the road are most um, highly uh, to increase the chance of a crash. These results show conclusively that the real key to significantly improving safety is to keep your eyes on the road while driving. In contrast, cognitive um, uh, situations such as being in an emotional conversation or listening to books on tape is much less risky than texting while driving. Several high visibility trucking and transit crashes have been directly linked to texting from a cell phone. VTTI's research showed that text messaging, which had the highest risk of over 20 times worse than driving while not using a phone, also had the longest duration of eyes off the road, 4.6 seconds during a six, six second interval. This equates to a driver traveling the length of many football fields at the speed of 55 miles per hour without looking at the roadway. Talking or listening to a cell phone allowed drivers to maintain their eye contact on the road ahead of them and was proven to be much less risky. Although in laboratory tests, it doesn't prove that, but in actual highway tests, it, it does seem to be okay. Teens seem to be at the biggest risk when it comes to texting while driving. Teens are a particular risk group, considering that according to Nielsen, the US the average U.S. teen now texts 2,900 times a month, and many of these texts are sent and received behind the wheel. So just as a side note, if you have to be taking a road trip this holiday break, you may feel safest driving in Arizona. However, you may want to stay out of Tennessee. A survey released says 26% of mobile phone users question admit to DWT or driving while texting. The highest number of offenders are in Tennessee, with 42% of people saying that they text behind the wheel, while Arizona came in at the lowest at just under 20%. Driving while texting is now fully banned in seven states as well as Washington, D.C., and partial banned in selected few other states. But it's just not auto drivers who pose the risk. Earlier this month, a 24-year-old Massachusetts man operating a, a train ran his train into the one ahead of him, injuring 50 passengers. Later, the man admitted to authorities that he was texting with his girlfriend while operating the train.
this point <coughs> up here was texting, moved into the right lane, and he's somewhere in here where you should be over there. Um, these are the different states, and as you can see in California, you're not supposed to do anything, not drive, look at phone at all. Um, but most of the states do allow you to drive and, and uh, use your cell phone. What this graph shows here is while you're texting, in the time of doing a simple text, at 70 miles an hour, you travel the length of 10 football fields. At 30 miles an hour, you travel about four football fields. As you can see, the person that was texting, let's say the person here putting lipstick on, and the accident happened here, they had time to slow down and stop. However, this person, you know, it was too late. They just went head on into the accident. What we found is that it's 23.2 um, times um, more distracting texting than someone that's not texting. So as we have seen, um, the problem is driving while texting. We've also gone over the actual cause, what's going on while you're driving while texting. So let's uh, talk about some solutions. First, driving is a visual task and non-driving activities that draw the driver's eyes away from the roadway, such as texting and dialing, should always be avoided. Second, texting should be banned in moving vehicles for all drivers. This cell phone task has the potential to create a true crash epidemic, especially if texting type tasks continue to grow in popularity and in the generation of frequent texters reach driving age in large numbers. Third, headset cell phone use is not substantially safer than handheld use because the primary risk is associated with the dialing and the picking up of the phone and keeping your eyes off the road. True hands-free phone use, such as voice-activated system, if designed well enough, is the, a real good solution because it allows you to keep your eyes on the road while um, dialing the phone. Fourth, all cell phone use should be banned for newly licensed teen drivers. Research done by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration in April of 2008 has shown that teens tend to engage in cell phone tasks much more frequently and in much more risky situations than adults. Thus, studies indicate that teens are four times more likely to get into an accident compared to their adult counterparts. And fifth, a promising Senate bill the Alert Drivers Act of 2009 would do exactly that. It would require states to adopt federally set minimum penalties for texting while driving, or they would forfeit 25% of their highway financing. To recap, we've talked about texting while driving, how it's a problem for you, and you can go to jail, or worse, you can fatally injure somebody. Second, the cause is due to talk, taking your eyes off the road for mere seconds, nothing more than that. And third, there are solutions via government regulation or just simply not DWT. Finally, there is one more, more way that can be more distracting than driving and texting at the same time, and that's texting and driving while under the influence of drugs or alcohol. So if you happen to be a habitual texter and you find yourself behind the wheel after a few drinks, do me a favor, text me first and let me know you're on the road so I can get out of it. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.